What's up everyone, Coach Tony from Bombeck Strength, and today we're gonna to go over the truth about round back deadlifts. Now, back position in the deadlift is kind of a hotly debated topic. A lot of coaches will say that if you don't deadlift with a flat back, that you increase your chance of injury. Some people will say deadlifting with a round back is totally fine, that the spine was meant to flex, so it's not a big deal. So it can be a little bit confusing to understand what exactly is the best way to deadlift, so I'll try to clear up some of that controversy. Now, First of all, there are no exercises that are inherently dangerous. It's really a matter of the positioning, the loading of the exercise, so how heavy it is, and how accustomed a person has become to training in that position. Now, somebody who's training uh, a new trainee who maybe hasn't done much deadlifting before, if they try to deadlift really heavy relative to their abilities with their back in a rounded position, one can reason that that's probably more likely to result in injury than somebody who's been training for a very long time, has grown accustomed to deadlifting heavy in more of a round back position. That person's kind of built up a tolerance for it. So you can see the difference between the two situations. There's some nuance to it, of course. Now, when we deadlift with a rounded back, what that means, what that looks like to us, is that as we go down and get the bar, either the upper back and or the lower back goes into kind of this circle shape, kind of this crescent moon shape, so that when we deadlift, our hips are rolled under in a position that we call flexion. This is spinal flexion versus spinal extension, where we flatten the back, we pull the chest up, which is often thought of as a good deadlift position. There's some reasons for this. So when we go into spinal flexion, what's called shear loading on the spine increases. So we go into flexion, we add a heavy weight in our hands, and we have a compressive force. So the weight of the bar pulls, pushes our spine and our discs down this way. And then also the additional rounding kind of closes down the front of the spine and opens up the back of the spine where the disc could possibly herniate out. So that's generally the mechanism for disc herniation, which is why a lot of people kind of get up in arms about deadlifting in a rounded back position because it kind of mimics that position and that same mechanism for a lower back injury. <laughs> you just simply can't guarantee that that's gonna happen. And anecdotally, I've been coaching and lifting for a long time. I've seen a lot of round back deadlifts that did not result in injury. I've seen a lot of deadlifts in a, what looks like a good position result in injury. So there's just absolutely no way to speak about it in absolutes, ironically, uh, strange choice of words. But anyways, another reason why you might want to avoid round back deadlifting that has nothing to do with injury is that if we get too rounded over in our back position, the lift becomes uh, somewhat inefficient, specifically the lockout of the lift. So a lot of times you'll see people start their lift in a good position, what we think of as an as a ideal position with the back relatively flat, and then as they go to lift it, their back will start to round, and they may get the bar past their knee, but they're in a really poor position to finish the lift here. My hips are too tucked under, so that when the bar does clear my knees, I can't just stand up and straighten my legs. I have to pitch, push my knees forward, and then ramp the bar up my thighs. That's not allowed in powerlifting. That's why you see a lot of lifters who maybe round their back off the floor. Yeah, they'll get the bar to lock out, but they'll have to hitch to finish it so the lift doesn't count anyways. So that can be fixed by simply letting yourself start in a more flat back position and trying to maintain it throughout. How do you maintain a flat back position with really heavy deadlifts? It's hard. You have the path of least resistance is for your body to go into that flexion position. So we keep our back flat in two ways. We find hamstring tension. So we make sure we're pushing our butt back far enough and tilting our pelvis forward enough to create some of that hamstring tension where our hamstrings meet our pelvis. So not letting ourselves start tucked under, but keeping our hips a little higher, arching our back and creating that hamstring tension. Also creating tension with our lats by taking the slack out of the bar. We think of it as bending the bar with straight arms. So when we're down to the bar, not bending it with bent arms, but keeping our arms long, taking the slack out, and then kind of prying the bar off the floor using our lats. Those two things together should help keep your back flat, even when the weight's heavy. If you simply can't keep your back flat, no matter how much tension you create, the weight on the bar is too heavy, you should go lighter. All right, now there are some advantages to deadlifting with somewhat of a rounded back. And you'll often see the best deadlifters in the world 
uh, relax their shoulders and round their upper back while keeping their lower back in a pretty consistent position. I'll show you the difference between those two. So there's a huge difference in deadlifting with your lower back rounded and your hips tucked under like that versus keeping your hips and your lower back in a consistent position, but just relaxing your upper back. So you can see the difference here. My lower back is flat, but my upper back is re uh, relaxed and rounded versus the hips being tucked under like that. You'll often see deadlifters with very long arms and very big, broad upper backs use this position. This is advantageous for a couple reasons. You get to start with your hips higher. Whenever your hips start higher in a deadlift, you can generally generate a little bit more speed off the ground and you don't run the risk of your hips popping up so much. If I start a deadlift and my hips dropped down really low, if the weight is heavy, I'm gonna to start to lift and my hips are gonna pop up like so. Kind of just a position where they find hamstring tension like we just talked about. With a relaxed upper back, they have nice long arms, you can get to the bar with your hips higher, allowing you to maintain more hamstring tension. And that's kind of a, a longer lever is a more mechanically advantageous lever. I often ask lifters, if you were trying to pry open a garage door, would you rather have a long crowbar or a short crowbar? The long crowbar is obviously the answer. So starting with your hips higher, it's kind of like starting with a longer crowbar. So you'll see lifters purposely relax their shoulders and round their upper back while keeping their lower back in a consistent position. And that kind of circumvents that above the knee problem that you see with a rounded lower back position, but shortens that range of motion, allows you to grab the bar a little bit sooner. All right, so we can't say for sure that deadlifting with a, round, uh, with a rounded back is injurious. That's just simply uh, making too many assumptions. And anecdotally, we've seen good looking lifts where lifters get hurt. We've seen bad looking lifts where lifters don't get hurt. There is no absolutes in that sense. But deadlifting with a purposely rounded and relaxed upper back can be a great tool to use for more advanced lifters, specifically lifters with nice long arms to help them deadlift more. So just like anything, the answer lies somewhere in the middle. It's really just the technique that works best and feels best for the individual lifter.